Hi everyone. In today's video, we're going to be continuing our series on skills and tools for managing and coping with depression. And in the last number of videos, we've focused on the idea of a sustainable lifestyle, essentially ensuring that you're putting back enough energy into yourself as you're expending energy dealing with daily tasks and stressors. Because one of the things that happens in depression is that a person's lifestyle becomes less sustainable, where they have so many more factors draining energy from their life than are putting energy back into their life. And so far, we've talked about a number of sustainable lifestyle topics, including diet, physical exercise, the importance of having fun, and sleep. These are valuable sources of energy in that often get neglected when a person is experiencing depression. So the next topic related to a sustainable lifestyle relates to the issue of drugs and alcohol. Now, it may seem obvious, but it's important to note regardless that individuals with depression are much more likely to turn to drugs and alcohol as a way of self-medicating and alleviating emotional pain. Essentially, it can be very tempting to turn to drugs and alcohol as a form of self-medication to cope with the symptoms of depression. And while drugs and alcohol may provide temporary relief of symptoms, they can often exacerbate the underlying depression and lead to a vicious cycle of dependency. Essentially, as a person is feeling depressed and down, they turn to alcohol or drugs to suppress or self-medicate those negative emotional states, which in turn just leads to even worse depression symptoms. But you might be wondering, how exactly does alcohol or drug use make depression symptoms worse? If I'm feeling down and I'm feeling really depressed or upset, and I have a drink or I use marijuana and don't feel as down or upset anymore, What's wrong with that? How would that actually make my depression any worse? Well, there are a number of ways in which alcohol and drugs can lead to worsening depression symptoms. The first is that if you're using drugs or alcohol to cope with negative emotional states, what ends up happening is that problems are avoided rather than being dealt with. If I'm having problems in my relationship with my wife and I deal with the stress of those problems, by drinking or using drugs, I'm not actually dealing with the problems in my relationship. The drugs or alcohol make it more difficult for me to problem solve or deal with the challenging situations with my wife. And my use of drugs and alcohol as a way of coping may actually be an additional source of problem or conflict in the relationship. And typically, if you're not dealing with a problem or a problem situation, the problem doesn't tend to go away on its own, but rather it festers and becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until it becomes a crisis, which isn't good. Another way that drugs and alcohol can worsen symptoms of depression is because they can interfere with performance in important life activities like work, home responsibilities, and social situations. As I just noted, problematic use of drugs and alcohol can lead to interpersonal challenges in relationships with family members or friends. It can lead to social isolation as people turn to using drugs and alcohol to cope. And as a result, they isolate people from, it, the drugs and alcohol tend to isolate people from supportive social networks. So this can lead to a greater sense of alienation and disconnection from other people. Obviously, if you're increasing drug and alcohol use, that's going to have a negative impact on your ability to perform household chores and responsibilities. It may interfere with your attendance and performance at work. And what ends up happening is that a person begins to feel like there are so many areas in their life that are falling apart and not going well. I'm having problems at work because I'm not able to get up. I'm not able to get as much done. Chores are piling up at home because I've spent the last two nights drinking. My relationships are continually strained because I'm constantly fighting with people about how much I'm drinking or my drunk use. 
at a physiological level, alcohol and some drugs are central nervous system depressants. And what that means is that they slow down brain activity and body functions. Now, in the short term, this might provide temporary feelings of relief or disconnection from stress. But the depressive nature of these substances can lead to worsening depression symptoms, especially when used often. Depressive effects of alcohol and some drugs can interfere with cognitive functioning. It can lead to emotional numbing and lead to a decrease in overall en levels of energy and motivation. So using drugs and alcohol to cope with depression is paradoxically serving the role of worsening the depression. Another problem with using drugs or alcohol to manage symptoms of depression is that it increases the risk of suicidal thoughts and behavior. Substance use can impair judgment and impulse control, making people more vulnerable to act on suicidal thoughts. Essentially, drugs and alcohol can interfere with your ability to think more realistically about situations, and the danger is that you get into more negative thinking spirals, including suicidal ideation. And if you're in an intoxicated state, you're more likely to act without thinking clearly, potentially leading to impulsive suicide attempts. Um, alcohol and drug use can contribute to physical and health problems, which can exacerbate symptoms of depression. For example, higher levels of alcohol consumption can lead to liver damage, heart problems, and increased risk of accidents or injuries. And there's a strong link between depression and chronic health conditions and physical injuries. Therefore, if your drug and alcohol use is leading to physical problems or physical injuries or impairments, that's likely going to contribute even more to feelings of depression and hopelessness. And the final way that drugs and alcohol can contribute to worsening depression is that the substances can interfere with treatments for depression. Uh, treating depression when it co-occurs with drug or alcohol abuse can be much more challenging than treating each, each issue separately. Uh, a number of antidepressant medications that are commonly used to treat depression can interact with drugs and alcohol thereby making the medications less effective. Additionally, many standard psychological treatments for depression may not be as effective in the presence of drug or alcohol use. For example, it makes it a lot more challenging to engage in cognitive behavioral treatments, goal setting, and challenging negative thinking patterns contributing to depression when a person is regularly using drugs or alcohol and they're interfering with their cognitive functioning or motivation. So if you're experiencing depression and you're finding that you're using drugs or alcohol to cope or self-medicate the psychological symptoms, what can you do about it? Now, the thought of having to eliminate drugs or alcohol completely from your life might seem daunting or unrealistic, particularly if you've been using those substances for a while. So while Ideally, it is best to avoid using drugs and alcohol when you're experiencing depression. Reducing how much you use is better than feeling overwhelmed by the idea of abstinence from substances and giving up entirely. And just like w with all of the other sustainable lifestyle topics we've discussed, you can use goal-setting approaches to help reduce or limit your drug or alcohol consumption. So, the first step would be to survey how much you're actually using. Spend some time monitoring and documenting when and how much of the substances you're actually using. Now, this can be quite eye-opening to some people as once they start to monitor their drug or alcohol use, they're surprised by how much and how often they're actually using. And if that's the case, the idea is not to get too overwhelmed but to just focus on what would be a realistic step to cut back or reduce how much you're using. You could set a goal as simple as putting the alcohol in your home away in a closet so that it's not as readily accessible or staring you in the face all the time. That way, if you're tempted to have a drink, you have to go all the way down to the hallway, open the closet and get the bottle uh, from the closet. And during all of that time, 
it gives you an opportunity to think about what you're doing and whether or not you really want that drink. Now, this is just one of many examples of specific behavioral, realistic goals that you can set for yourself to reduce or cut back on your alcohol or drug use. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a better sense of how alcohol and drugs work with depression to make the depression worse and potentially lead to alcohol or substance abuse. If you're interested in learning more about other sustainable lifestyle habits that you can develop to manage and buffer against the effects of depression, I'd encourage you to check out this video. So that's all for today's video. As always, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.